Hello again everyone and welcome back to Dark Souls 2. Here we rejoin for M, the depths of Drang Lake Castle, and the end game is upon us. I'm gonna quick run on over here to talk to Dark Diver Grandal, and we're gonna be ready to join the Pilgrims of the Dark and start making our way through the Abyss. Or the Chasm of Old, as it's so strangely called here. And this was the final time meeting him, and so can finally join up and that'll open the portal. I want to also grab the uh, oh goodness armor set that's down here as well as the bonfire so I'm gonna need to clear out this ruined sentinel just so that I can have a little bit of free time to do that. Look at that damage output. 1700 in a single three hit combo. I suppose it's technically four hit combo but that's besides the point. Rest on up, and we're ready to go exploring down in the abyss. Hopefully we won't run into too much trouble, but, eh, who can say. Did I already pick up the Faram armor? Let's check. Mm, yeah, apparently I did. So I've got that, and I guess I just didn't bother with the rest of it, so let's head on in. This will also look pretty cool just for the fact of the uh, really black phantom look that it gives you. Fingers crossed that I don't get invaded because invasions in the Chasm of Old are just the absolute dickens. You already have the uh, phantoms in here that you're dealing with already. Adding on actual player characters to that can be something else. Oh. I cannot stagger him. That's not good. Gonna make some distance so that I can Estus, but uh, he shouldn't follow me too religiously. Oh. There we go. I can stagger him if he's not already attacking. That's good to see. But honestly, it shouldn't matter since after him, there's not very many more particularly challenging phantoms in here. Everyone else is more of a sideshow after that first encounter with Havel. There we go. This guy, who actually shows up in every single version of the Abyss, though I'm still not entirely sure what or why. Now, there's, there's, doesn't seem to be anything on him other than it's just a spirit that uh, inhabits the Chasm of Old. You can actually bring a torch all the way from the bonfire but uh, it's it's just so much simpler to use a real quick flame butterfly. I think that's one of the most worthwhile uses of the flame butterflies in the entire game. Other than that, there's not really very many places where you really need them. Especially because they give you so much. Like As you saw in my inventory, I already have 26 flame butterflies. What am I ever going to do with 26 flame butterflies? I'm not going to need that many in the game. So... Just burn them whenever it's convenient to do so. Oh, and we get a bonfire aesthetic. All the phantoms in here have a fairly high chance to drop one, so if you're ever needing some and don't necessarily have the cash to buy them from merchants, then just come on down to the Chasm of Old. For the price of a single... Oh, goodness. I want to talk to him just so he'll give me my reward. But for the price of a single human effigy, you can head right on through. And if you've actually made your way entirely through the Covenant, then the Abyss will have become unsealed, and you can just complete all of its um, sections without even paying the price for them. I don't recall whether or not you actually need to bonfire aesthetic the bonfires once you've already unlocked them. Um, no, no, no. I want, the, I want the second bonfire here. It's much more of a straight run. From here, you actually have a chance of getting doodled by the uh, little hands that come out of the muck. From this bonfire, it's just a fairly straight run over. And it, it may help to uh, activate a torch here, but I'm pretty sure I can just... Yeah, look at it. There we go. I already used the forgotten key, so... Just come on in to talk to Grantendal, give him an effigy, and that'll open us up. Oh. This is a particularly annoying dialogue, just because you want to rapid tap, and 
then it automatically sets you to no. But here we are. You can't actually have a hand follow you in here, as you can see. It's a little bit interesting, but you can warp on out to the chasm of old, dark chasm of old, in very short order, so it's not too much of a setback. This is a little bit of an interesting encounter because you really have to be careful to aggro these guys one at a time. If you get ganged up on, you're going to have a bad time of it. You should follow that up. Swing. Swing. Oh. Oh dear. These guys are kind of annoying because, as you can see, he's got that turtle back. I can't backstab him at all. Swing again. There we go. Now he should be stagger. Oh. Unless he's rolling. There we go. It. There we go. Oh dear, now we've got Xanthus over there aggroed as well, so... Now I just need to finish this guy as fast as possible. There we go. Coming over to Xanthus. Rolling attack's pretty okay, make him drop, that's nice. I don't think we've aggroed the spirit, so it's not as bad as it could be, but... There is... It's very difficult to aggro these guys in a... sensible manner and they can really just start ganging up on you. Swing, 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 swing. One more should be the kill. Oh, that was Forbidden Sun, I think, but I managed to dodge through most of it. Where do we go from here? Probably just down here. I believe the uh, bonfire is actually up and to the left. I don't think there's any more spirits in the path, so let's flame butterfly on up. You can just head on over there. The problem with the Abyss is that you can sometimes have to face quite a few spirits at once, and that can make it a very difficult fight. Whereas taking on any single one of them at a time is just a matter of playing smart, baiting out their attacks, and staggering them when you get the chance. Invasions can happen in the Abyss, and it's extremely cruel, but... uh it's just something to look out for. Luckily there are a lot of spots where you can abuse gravity to kind of deal with any sorts of unwanted guests, but that is something you need to think about ahead of time. Would you stop? It's like he sees me attacking and decides that he wants to roll away. But I get the stagger. Really want to aggro just one of them at a time, but it doesn't look like they're going to give me that luxury. Okay, I can come up here and the Xanthus has much bigger head start and so the spirit should take some time working its way up here. Come on back. The twin blade, as you can see, is really great at not only staggering but comboing enemies once they've been staggered. It's got a very vicious follow-up attack after the first flight attack in its combo and you can use that to great effect. Should be all the phantoms. I believe I lit the bonfire. Has something gone wrong? A glitch? What's going on here? Let me just back it up a ways to make sure that I didn't miss anything, but. That fog gate shouldn't be there. That's interesting. I could have sworn that we lit the bonfire. Yeah, it's definitely a lit bonfire. I remember we killed both the pyromancer and the turtle back here. Oh, I didn't realize that there were two of these phantoms. Well, let's let's move on then. That takes care of that. Something that makes me wonder is why there's so much water in the abyss. Uh, in Dark Souls 1, the Abyss didn't really have very many natural features at all. It was just kind of dark and spooky, filled with a bunch of corrupted individuals and humanity. But here in Dark Souls 2, it seems to have a sort of, I don't know, watery, sunken look to it. A lot like Shulva and what uh, Hyde will eventually look like. So... Oh, I am s I am getting invaded. Why is that happening? Why would they do that to me? Okay, so it looks like we're getting some unintentional PvP. 
Let's get the stagger ring. Uh, if he wants to fight me, he can come and get me. I don't want to leave the bonfire room at all. There's a bunch of hazards out there that just aren't going to be very fun to deal with. Ready? Oh, he's not paying attention. Let's just get a little bit of extra damage and move in for the kill. Is he is he just going to sit there and let himself be poisoned? It looks like it. I mean, surely he has some sort of poison moss. I, I just don't think he's seen me yet. That's very strange of him. But I'll take it. <laughs> okay, then. I... I have to wonder if he really knew what he was doing if he didn't bring along Poison Moss when he was invading in Black Gulch. I mean, that just sounds like a very strange method of going about it. But, uh, you know, who am I to judge? If he wants to invade like that, um, I'll let him. Now we're moving on to the final Dark Lurker. Well, I suppose it's not quite Dark Lurker, but, uh, the final shrine to the dark chasm of old the final dark diver grand all location uh, once through there I'm just gonna homeward bone immediately out of the boss fight because I want to grab these tier 2 rewards for the covenant and you actually completely miss out on those if you go straight from the uh, final clear through the chasm to actually kill dark lurker on your first try and since I hope I can kill Dark Lurker on my first try. That's what I'm going to be heading for. We shall see if that actually turns out to be the case, but still want to be able to grab the Tier 2 rewards if at all possible. I believe it's only a Great Resonant Soul, but I'm greedy. What can I say? Free spell casts. Who's going to really turn that down? Coming in through here. This is one of the trickier chasms just because it has a lot of range damage potential. And aggroing them one at a time is a lot more difficult to do here than it is in some of the other chasms. I believe the spirit's already seen me, so I can kind of bait him out. Wait for him to come around. And the noise from our fight should maybe aggro the other two, but, uh,. We're going to have to see about that. Swing, swing, swing. Yep, that aggroed the archer, which is actually good because it means he's not aggroed just yet, and I can kind of sit back and wait for them to come in one at a time. Swing, swing. Want to get a combo off on this guy as early as possible. Now I've got their both aggro, but he's low and coming at me with his bow. And now it's going to be a very simple fight, because after this guy, there's only one more phantom in the entire uh, level, and it's just a repeat of him. So, there we have it. I suppose if they aggro fairly nicely like they did, then this area isn't a trick at all. Come right on through, light up the bonfire. It is nice because it is one of the shortest paths, but it also has this little trap right here where if you're not paying attention you can just fall down the elevator shaft of death. I'm considering whether I want to use this location or Drain Lake Castle to actually challenge Dark Lurker for real and if that fight was any indication I'm definitely gonna wanna go here because I know Havel can or at least the Phantom Havel can do some really nasty things to me but I managed to take on this whole encounter without any sorts of problems, so if I can get a repeat of that, this would actually be a much better location to take on through to the final fight. Just keep on swinging because I've got more than enough durability to tank through it. Come on down here, and time to age feather out because I want my covenant rewards. What can I say? But I will be back for you, Dark Lurker, don't worry. Uh, the the goal is to take on Dark Lurker and Ancient Dragon in this episode and save the really royal bosses for the end, namely Nishandra, Vendrick, and the Throne Duo, though not necessarily in that order. 
uh, coming around. Now it's just, yeah, I, I honestly wasn't expecting the chasm to go this fast, but we may actually have quite the quick episode today. Be a nice break from the hour-long segments I've been pumping out. I know that can't necessarily be the easiest thing to watch, but I think it's the mm, best format for it. I really like the long-form episodes when I'm watching a Let's Play, like especially a uh, really in-depth game like Dark Souls. So that's what I'm trying to give to you. One more human effigy, and we're on to face the boss, if at all possible. Hopefully we get another lucky aggro set, but no matter what happens, we've got plenty of Estus and Life Gems if I'm going to be really stingy with my Estus. Though I don't honestly think that Estus is going to be the limiting factor of this fight. The thing that's probably going to get me is if I get burst down. Okay, I've aggroed the Spirit. I, I say that just because the Dark Lurker is a very interesting fight in that almost all of his attacks are incredibly easy to avoid and so it's really only gonna be a problem if I get greedy and if I think he I think I drew him too far out of aggro uh, come on you guys can see me just come after me it's not that hard here we are as I was saying Dark Lurker is more of a test of endurance and how well you can manage your camera and rolls when faced with a pair of enemies because that's what really makes the fight difficult is the fact that he splits himself. Oh dear. Well, that's not good. Not only is, do I have two of them aggroed and I can't necessarily finish the first one, but he actually managed to get an Estus off, which is going to make it a lot more difficult. But if they're going to line up like that, then it's gonna go just as easy as the first run. Come on through. <laughs> Gravity is OP. I just I just want you all to know that. No, uh not paying attention is OP and when you have the fi bonfire lit right there, it can be a little bit easier to kind of ignore the potholes on the ground, so let's let's human up and try that again. As you saw the first time, the phantoms in the front room aren't really going to be too much of an issue. I suppose the only real threat bef between me and Dark Lurker is going to be the uh, that little pitfall there. If I don't necessarily pay attention to it again, I, that would be rather embarrassing, but luckily the run back's no big deal. You can just run past everything and not bother with any of it. He's just sitting there laughing like, oh... Don't think I don't know what happened. I've been to the Abyss. I know what it's like. And he has been to the Abyss. I don't know what's wrong with him that he's so decrepit and wheelchair-ridden now, but back in his prime, he was a Dark Diver. He actually entered the Abyss. You can actually tell that because he holds the Dragon Chime, which he'll give you as a reward once you've killed Dark Lurker and cleared out his whole quest line. Uh, the actual description of the Dragon Chime states that it was that it lay in the abyss for some number of years. So it is absolutely confirmed that Dark Diver Grandal actually came into the abyss on his own and picked that up at one point or another. There we go. Oh, thought I was managing my range a little bit better, but I can take the trade-off hit. Step around. There we go. The archer's no big deal because he staggers like it's nothing. The only problem is if he tries to create range and then starts plinking away at you. No S's for you. Grab my souls and avoid that pitfall. Now we're thinking with our dipstick. The phantom dies in a quick flurry of swings. Pull up the elevator so I, again, can avoid that gravity death. I really like the purpley look that uh, the black phantom look of the Abyss gives the Vengarl set just because it's so red that a little bit of that shines through even with the bluish black outline. You can really see it at certain angles when the lighting gets a certain way. The very purple or amethyst looking color. Come on through here. He's just all black because 
whatever equipment that they actually stuck him with just looks black in the, uh, or I would say matte of some sort in the base game. So when you apply the real blackish tint, blue purple tint to it, it just looks straight black. Fall on through, and it's Dark Lurker time. I am going to. No, no buffs for me. I was considering using the Dark Pine resin, but uh, I guess that would really be a terrible idea versus Dark Lurker. Almost every single one of Dark Lurker's attacks can be avoided just by. Oh! Just by sprinting away from him. And that's one of your best choices for avoiding damage, just because it doesn't lock you up into a roll. You're not uh, wasting stamina just running. I mean, you're not wasting stamina actually using the roll, so... Oh, that was a bad idea on my part. Should not have gone in for those extra hits. I thought he was duplicating and I wanted to get the extra damage, but no such luck. Okay, now he's duplicating. Oh, dear. Oh, that was cool. Now, the fight is really about trying to burst Dark Lurker down and avoiding his spells as best as you possibly can. Whichever one is casting at you or coming at you, run at the other one and swing the arrow. Oh, here. I'm probably getting a hit. No, no, I'm not. This is an incredibly interesting fight because it's a mix of melee and range. Like, no matter what, uh, you're going to have attacks coming at you from a bunch of different angles and in a bunch of different fra fashions. It's not like you can just close in and get uh, in melee combat and then have done with it. Oh dear. It's not like you can just close in melee combat and have done with it like you can on some bosses. Oh dear. No. Oh god. Double Estus, triple Estus. No, not going to triple Estus. But now we've got the kill shot. Bam, and that's Dark Lurker for you. You can actually die after killing Dark Lurker. It, it's, it is a definite possibility. Especially if he has some sort of projectile in the air as he's coming after you. That can be incredibly dangerous, but... That's the fight, and now we're going to return to Grandal. Grab up all of his rewards. The Xanthus set, the Dragon Chime, as well as Climax, if I'm not mistaken. Talk to him. The Covenant rank has deepened. Yes, Climax, Xanthus set, and if you talk to him, he'll actually hand over his Dragon Chime. Because he is an incredibly evil guy and is actually working to spread the Abyss, I think the world will be a much safer place without him in it. So I'll just double up on the Dragon Chimes, just, just in case. You never know. <laughs> no, I do like to kill the evil characters before I finish up the game, at least anyone that I can say without a shadow of a doubt is evil, like Grandall there. I, I don't know if you anyone out there has really spent too much time thinking about it, but uh, what he's having you do is unseal the abyss. The Dark Lurker, while you might think is an evil entity that's a servant of the abyss, if you actually think about it for any period of time, you actually realize that the Dark Lurker is the only thing that's sealing the Abyss away. The hex you can actually make with the Dark Lurker's soul is Life Drain Patch, which is described as sealing away a bit of the Abyss. It actually seals the dark within a certain confines, and that's how you actually damage enemies or even allies, because the dark doesn't discriminate. I'm going to come right on up through here. I considered whether or not I wanted to actually farm this place out in order to just get a straight run to the Dragon Rider. Not the Dragon Rider, but the Ancient Dragon. But I eventually thought better of it, and I thought I'd showcase the ideal route for coming on through here without having to actually clear anything. Run right on up through here. Ignore them. As long as you aggro them in a certain way and kind of draw them away from the door, you can sneak right on through. Always come in at a slant so that you have a little bit more versatility here. Try and dash through these guys. The axe wielder will get you if you're not quite fast enough or coming in at the wrong angle. 
but it's fairly easy to avoid. The real saving grace about this area is how the enemies are staggered at a slant, and so if you come in at a certain angle, you can actually uh, duck right on through without worrying about them. This is... Ah, oh goodness. This is going to be a tricky fight just because all the poise and defenses these this armor gives me is going to be absolutely worthless here. Considering whether I want to just go with the Faram armor to give me a little bit less weight to deal with and switching out the twin blade to the blacksmith's hammer, but I want to at least have the first boss fight be as much of the gimmick as possible. I really like the setup I've got going here, so I'm just going to go with that. Get as much damage off on him while he's waiting there as you can. I'm going to dump my stamina, but he's not going to punish me for it. Wonderful. It allows me to come right on in. Luckily, I have a, enough stamina for a full three-hit combo without him... Uh, and still have enough to run away when I'm done. God, if he run jumps forward, I'm screwed. But I, I think that I... No. No, I think he jumped forward slightly. Yeah. You can see by his positioning that he actually came forward a bit. I'm going to give it one more attempt with the Twin Blade and Faram set. Just because I, I really like the gimmick. It looks cool. And... I mean, th it's the entire point of the playthrough is to get to this... The point where we could use the... Red Iron Twin Blade and the um, Vengarl set all together. So I think I'm just going to keep this up as long as I can. Even if it is not necessarily the most ideal setup for this boss, because honestly, the Ancient Dragon is like the perfect showcase for how effective you can be with the two handed mace move set. That little priestess being annoying as all get go. But because locking on to the Ancient Dragon is basically worthless, and the two-handed mace comes out so fast and is so good for just single target damage, I really think that this would be a really nice showcase for it. But I want to keep up the gimmick as long as I can. It's re it is really gratifying. Like This is the first time I've ever used the Red Iron Twin Blade for anything, really. So I'm also just enjoying playing with it new interesting weapon. Come right on through there. I believe that I have enough stamina to get into the boss fight and without getting staggered from behind. Yeah. If you're too slow or don't have the enough stamina, that guy can actually come up from behind and tag you on your way in. He can stagger you out of the boss fog and also just get some free damage on you. And if you're low like I am, it can actually be a legitimate threat. I'm not going to back up towards the entrance this time because I very much fear him lunging forward. I was a little bit excessive with the range there, but that allows you to draw him into the forward flame more easily if you are a bit excessive. As you, you can always read by his body language which attack he's going for next. When he brings his claws back and rises up like that, you know he's going to be doing the straight out flame. When he prepares to jump up like that, you can tell he's going for the big circular rain of fire attack. And if you manipulate your range and how you come in against him, he will always follow up with the very forward uh, breath of fire attack whenever he heads on up. I think I can get a full four hits and still have enough stamina to run on out. Oh dear. I was not paying attention to him, and now I missed some time for damage, so... Get a quick hit in there. 650, that's a lot. I mean, for a single hit. I mean, I know I used a weapon buff, but even then, this is a very powerful weapon. Slash. I want to just dump as much stamina as I can. That's already got him down to half health. He is definitely going to rain a fire now. I need to roll the last little bit of distance I can. That's a little trick that you might want to use if you're having difficulties getting the perfect amount of range, is that the jumping attack is actually faster than any other mode of... not the jumping attack, but the actual jump is faster than any other method of moving. And so you can use that right before he uh, does his 
actual breath attack to get that last little bit of distance just to be absolutely safe if at all possible come on through I'm very impressed with the damage just oh no I came in too quickly as you saw and he decided he was not having that as I was saying I'm actually been very impressed with the damage this weapon is outputting you saw I got over 700 damage in a single swing when I was buffed with the dark pine resin and being able to come in and just unload like that is really really impressive looking just from a damage numbers aspect I, I believe I can manipulate him right here if he doesn't want to yep there he goes I'm gonna do the jump because oh no <laughs> Uh, if you're not close enough, you can actually get completely caught out by that attack and uh, just toast it alive right in front of him, which is incredibly saddening when you actually have taken the effort to bait him into the, quote, safe attack. So I almost really paid for it there, but I believe this is the right range. Yep, come on up. And this should be the end of the fight. I believe I've got enough damage to kill him in this combo. Yes, yes, and yes. There we go. That is Ancient Dragon for you. Really happy that it didn't take me too many tries. Only two, actually. Uh, the first one was just a mess up because I got caught up against the wall. I hadn't considered what I would do if he was actually going to jump forward. And he decided to use that attack. So I got pegged right there up against the wall, and there was nothing I can do. I'm going to just clear my way back down for a little bit of... I don't know, a victory lap is how I guess I would describe it. I just killed arguably the hardest boss in the base game, and pretty happy with it. Only took me two tries, and all around it was a pretty flawless fight. At least the successful run was. I had one little moment of, you know, apprehension in the middle there when I got caught out, but I managed to just get the range in time. I can play sloppy because I've got plenty of Estus, and these guys are just going to walk in one at a time feeding themselves to me, so it's really nice. Power attack just to get the final kill. And let's age Feather on out of here. I've got almost 300,000 souls. That's not something you want to dick around with, especially versus those two Warpick Drake Keepers. That Warpick actually uses the Halberd moveset, and while it's wonderful in PvP, it's extremely dangerous in PvE. I believe I have enough to pretty much buy out all of Chloe-Anne's relevant items. I'm going to grab up all of her chunks while I can, and probably use those to upgrade the Faram set. But I also want at least one of these. I have plenty of those. That'll... Oh, I don't need chunks at all. I mean, slabs. Uh, get six of those. Three of those. That'll allow me to upgrade my armor quite well. Human on up. Uh, goodness. There's not a whole lot to this episode. I was expecting there to be a little bit more. Maybe I'll just head right on through and take on some of the bosses that I kind of left off. Like, um... Goodness. No, I'm, I'm upgrading my armor. That's right. I'm going to upgrade my Vengirl set. And the Faram set all the way up at the top here. But uh, some of the bosses I left off, like the Belfry Gargoyles, or... Um, what's another one? I'm actually going to upgrade this all the way to plus 10, just because it's the most worthwhile item to do that on. Uh, I know that I left the Executioner's Chariot. And were there any other optional ones? I don't believe there were, but I can check in just a moment. It's not going to take too much time. And that's the Faram set all the way to plus 7 across the board. My Vengarl set all the way to plus 5. And really, I'm at the basically the max I can get. Let's actually have a look-see. There's... I have never talked to Strayed, really. Okay, let's head on over there, see if I can get rid of some of these souls before I head on. But, yeah, there's the Undead Purgatory, the Belfry Gargoyles. Oh, and the Doors of Pharos is left to me, so... That's three little bosses that I can really round this out with after I uh, head on over to Strayed and buy up some of his stuff. 
just in case. I mean, I believe that I don't have any entombment on this character. Let me let me just check. Make absolutely certain. No, I even gave myself enough to attune three or more uh, actual spell casts. So, if I buy some of his useful pyromancies, that's actually going to be really helpful. Now that I'm no longer in the Pilgrims of the Dark, I can join whatever covenant I want, and I'm probably going to use that to join the uh, Brotherhood of Blood once I finish off the um, what are they? The Executioner Chariot just because he sells a lot of really good pyromancies and since I don't have any actual stats or scaling that pyromancies are going to be my really only source of um, actual use for those attunement slots. Also, I just checked and I noticed that I haven't upgraded my pyromancy flame so I might want to head back and talk to Rosabeth about that before heading on out, just to get as much of the sort of housekeeping out of the way as possible. I started as the knight, so I have the three int and faith required to deal with him. Not that the faith is ever a problem, because there actually aren't any characters with less than three faith, but I kind of assume that that's the requirements for dealing with straight, is three int and three faith, but I can't know for certain. Oh, and boss weapons. That's something I could spend my souls on. Definitely flame swath. And Lingering Flame I do enjoy. It's a bit of a strange one, but it has a lot of really good uses. Anything? I'm just going to buy up any spells cast that I might want later, no matter what I'm going to do with this build. Anything here? Uh, Smelter Sword might be fun. Pursuer's Greatsword would have a lot of damage, but it's a little bit difficult to use. Definitely going to grab the Bone Scythe, just because there's nothing else to really use that soul on. Um, everything else here is pretty lackluster for this character, so I'll just get Pursuer and Smelter Sword. Both of those are pretty heavy strength weapons, so that's nice. I always get heavy Soul Arrow, just because I think it's infinitely better than the regular Soul Arrow. I'm not going to need Dark Lurker Soul, and I want to actually show you the description. Yeah, a number of souls, and affix Dark to a certain spot, sealing it in as the Oh, Toxic Mist as well, because that's a very useful pyromancy. But, um, yeah, that's enough for Strayed. But as I was saying, the Life Drain patch actually affixes Dark to a certain spot. It seals it in, it stops it from getting out and doing harm to others around it. As you can see, especially from the fact that, I guess I didn't show it, but the Dark Lurker actually has a soul of light as opposed to a Dark Soul, like you find on Velstat and the Throne Duo. So we know for a fact that it's not a Dark creature, and it's actually been able to resist the corruption of the Darkness. That's, that's definitely something to note if you're really looking into the lore of the series. She looks janky as all hell, but she's here, and she's clothed, so I'm not going to complain. Uh, do either... This one has better base. Is it actually worthwhile? I, I don't recall. But I would assume so, because it does have a better base scaling. Is it actually... That one goes up by 12. This one goes up by 15. So I guess the Dark Pyromancy Flame is just better overall. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe the Pyromancy Flame gets better scaling from... Like, without having to be hollowed, but... I suppose the... Uh, Dark Pyromancy Flame is going to be the way to go just for the stronger base. Uh, is there anything else? Not here. The only other place I need to head over to is Brightstone Cove to grab up any boss soul weapons that I want from uh, Warn Effects over here, and then I'll head on to finish the bosses that I've kind of left waiting for a little bit. Swing, swing. But yeah, as you can see, this uh, Red Iron Twin Blade is incredibly useful for PvE. I've also seen it being used a lot in PvP, so I can only assume that it's doing wonders for people there. Let's see, what do I want most? Um, your spear would be nice, but I don't have the stats for it. Not the axe. Um, 
You know, I am going to grab York Spear just because I know it's the most expensive thing I can grab, and that first soul trade is free. But I'm also going to want the Chime Hammer. Goodness, this, this menu navigation. Just because it is a strong strength weapon, even if I don't have the stats for it. The Butcher's Knife is actually a weapon I'm going to upgrade and use properly, but the only other useful items are that one and that one. I suppose it would have been better to grab the Wrathful Axe, but I don't want it at all. And York Spear I kind of do want, just because it's got an interesting moveset, while the Wrathful Axe is just a really fail version of the Halberd. And look at that ac extra fire stat. I mean, you need a lot of faith to use that properly. Yeah, that's that's going to be it. Um, King's Mirror, just because I like it for Fashion Souls, but that's everything. Thank you kindly, and I'm going to head on to a boss fight now. I know it's not exactly the most interesting thing to see me ditzing around with all these minor encounters, but, you know, it's part of the game. Great Combustion. Yeah, let's use Great Combustion. Oh, no, let's head right on out. Uh, the first one I do want to go to is the Lost Bastille, just because... Not the Lost Bastille, but the uh, Belfry Luna. Just because I know that there's a good chance of getting some interesting PvP, and the boss here is actually a little bit more difficult than the other bosses I could take on at the moment. Get some Charcoal Pine Resin. That'll nicely complement my Pyromancies. And it just keeps keeps with the whole red theme of this character. Large Club is an incredibly good weapon, though they've recently nerfed its uh, two-handed heavy attack, which was one of its best features in PvE, so you might want to double think twice about that before you uh, lock yourself into that. I'm going to equip my Pyromancy Flame, just because I have the spells to use with it now. Where is it? There we are. Pop this on open. And we're probably going to get invaded at one point. Or, yeah, it's already started. Just going to head through this as fast as possible. I don't really want to deal with the NPC here. And, in fact, all the NPCs here are just going to be getting in my way. That's the first invader. Let's see if he bows. Does he bow? He does not. I really quickly want to get the stone ring, just in case. And now we fight. Okay, so this guy's lagging something awful. That's not good, especially if he's using a really heavy stagger weapon. Oh. Um. Goodness. Roll that. I'm gonna use a heavy spinning move. Oh, god. Let's see if I can get the fun kill. No, he's not gonna give it to me. Huh? That thrust's not gonna work. He really wants that backstab. He's really struggling for... Oh, dear. That's not good. I want out of here. Let's see what the thrust does for us. It baits him into a roll. That's good. That's really good. That's one invader down, so we should only have to deal with one more our entire stay here in the Belfry Luna. Though that is kind of chunking my Estus for later on. I kind of want to save as much of that as possible for the actual boss fight, because it's a real endurance fight. You're basically guaranteed to take damage on a heavier build like this, especially versus all those... Uh, gargoyles, so I'm going to want to be able to uh, remove as much of that as possible. See if the heavy attack gets him in one shot. It does. That makes me happy. Come on over. Hopefully get the sweet spot. And I do. And there should be one more, I believe, somewhere around here. But let's gather up the loot before I figure that out. Right back there. Yeah. Oh, ow. I can just life gem to top off. Prepare my charcoal resin, grab the last bit of loot, head on over to the uh, trigger, and hopefully I won't get invaded. Doesn't look like it, so let's head on down and face the Belfry Gargoyles. I really like what they did this, with this fight, at least from the perspective of bringing it back from Dark Souls 1. It's not the same fight as it was in Dark Souls 1. They actually innovated. They changed some things. They made it more interesting. Though at the same time, you could argue that just tossing more enemies into the fight doesn't make it more interesting. I think that uh, how they set it up so that it's actually a decent amount of gargoyles. Oh, goodness. 
is pretty... F oh, look at that damage. Okay, I was expecting a little bit more trouble with this, but not if I can do that. It's literally a two-hit if I get the counter damage. So, yeah, I guess I'm a little over-leveled for this. Yeah, this is a this is a massacre. I was really playing this up, and I, I guess it's just not going to live up to that. Especially with my buff, goodness. Maybe that's just a little bit too cruel. Yeah. If I get the counter hit, it's, it's literally just a two-shot. I'm not even going to need to Estus. I wasn't expecting this. Right now, I'm just like, kind of ditching around with the moveset to see how I can use it more effectively. Seeing if there's actually a follow-up to this thrust. There is a follow-up to the thrust. It's just a terrible follow-up. That's only... Really good. Can I? Can you at least pivot with the spin? You can. So, if they're backstab fishing you and and not lagging, then you can kind of use that to edge that out. But I don't know. Doesn't seem like it, the one-handed move set's useful for very much other than the one-handed weak attack follow-up. And what's the rolling attack like? No. That the sprinting attack and the one-handed follow-up, light attack follow-up, look to be the best things to be doing with this weapon. Rest right here, head on down, kill all the dogs down there with Vorgel the center. It's actually pretty funny if you can get your hands on a... Oh, that's it? Nice. I was expecting this to not necessarily kill them out. Oh, wow, it definitely does the job. Ignore me. Oh, look at that sweeping attack. This is such a strong weapon now. I mean, I can see why it's become so popular overnight. Uh, I, I really can't imagine why it wasn't used more before. Maybe it was the slightly worse base damages, but given its really heavy sweeping attacks, I, I can't imagine that that little bit of base damage off the top is really what's making the change. I mean, it's just really powerful because of its sweeping combo lock and really high damage. Uh, even if you take away that really high damage, it's still a very powerful weapon. Even if you just... Oh, uh, you know, I could head through the Belfry Saul. I don't believe I did that on this playthrough either, so... I had a little bit of PvP. Let's, let's get a little bit of more of that just before I round this video out with a final boss kill. It'll also take my Estus up to plus five, because I believe I already have another Sublime Bone Dust. I just haven't used it yet. And the final Sublime Bone Dust of the playthrough is waiting at the base of... Whatchamacallit? The Undead Purgatory. Yeah, not today. That's a very weak enemy, but it's annoying to deal with in conjunction with these other enemies that swarm you in the beginning. Especially if you immediately get invaded. Like, the fog gate hasn't opened up yet, so I think I'm pretty much safe. If that actually persists for too terribly much longer, I may actually want to uh, use the dried fingers just so that I can kind of assure myself of getting a little bit of action for you all. What was... Oh, wow, that is a powerful move. I like that. Not that, but, uh, Fried Fingers. I, I really like the moveset on this Twin Blade, I've got to admit. Twin Blades already have a naturally par- there. <laughs> well, ask and ye shall receive. Where's he coming from? Buff up. Top myself off. I believe he spawned all the way over there, otherwise I'd have seen him by now. But, let's come on. Oh. Maybe I was a little bit too anxious. Maybe I was... Maybe I messed up. Still don't see any of them, so... Let's... Let's piss them off. They absolutely hate it when you're ringing their bells. That's that's kind of what they're... Uh... <laughs> how, how does that... <laughs> I... There's only two ways for that to happen. Either one... Oh! Did I actually get invaded by... Oh, dear, this is bad. I, I'm going to Estus just because that's fall damage. That's not necessarily PvP damage, but... 
I think what happened was I was invaded by an actual red phantom, as well as... Oh dear, that's game. Yeah. If, if you are going to have an enemy... <laughs> oh, that's classy. But if you're going to have an enemy spamming hexes, uh, th there is really nothing you can do other than stay light on your feet and stay indoors, I guess. Use cover effectively, but that wasn't really an option when I had that other phantom right there. I mean, I still am curious about what exactly happened there. To have one of those phantoms be vanished, either... Again, it could have been that I actually had a red invade me as well, as the standard Sol invaders. And I'm, I'm starting to think that's what happened, just because he looked like he was already ready to be fighting. But And I got another gray invader right after. So, the other thing that I was thinking may have happened was that uh, he actually fell out of the map over there by the ladder but you know I I can't say for certain it's it's not really clear because the only ways to kill yourself here is to fall out of the map or take falling damage from this tower here and the likelihood of an invader being able to die from just falling the falling damage of this drop here is pretty piss poor I mean you'd have to be a very weak invader for that to happen Come on, just take out him. I did use my dried finger, but it didn't give me any more invasions. Let's use it one last time, and then I suppose I'll just clear through, because it maybe doesn't want to give me anything just yet. Come on down here, because I'm cocky and I want to take all of them on at once, like an idiot. Roll through that. Let's get this. Sweep through them too. He's not going to be an issue, and you are going to die because the Twin Blade attack actually comes out ridiculously fast, and there's no real way to avoid it if you're just sitting there. I believe I missed one bit of loot up there, so I'm going to give them just a smidge more time to invade me, but I, I'm pretty sure that that's not going to happen. Come on around, grab this. I didn't even human up. What am I doing with my time? Humanity restored. There we go. Just not paying attention, but that was some PvP for you. I got a little caught out by the really powerful ranged hexes, and there's there's not a lot I could have done there, at least as aggressive as I was playing. I didn't want to be healing in PvP, but I wasn't going to let fall damage be the death of me. I don't think that the fact that he was camping the ladder is really a fair position to put me in, so since I actually was trying to clear through the level, so I was just gonna negate that first little bit of damage. But alas and alack, it was to no end because they grouped up on me. But I, I will admit that double welcome at the end there was pretty fancy. I liked that. That was a nice touch. Don't have the stats to wield the Black Knight Greatsword, but I wouldn't want to either way. It's kind of it is a very powerful greatsword, but if you don't have the fire scaling for it, it's there's real no point to bothering with it. You'll get just as good damage out of uh, other sorts of greatswords, probably with a better move set, like say the claymore. Had a lot of luck with that, and keeping it all physical damage. Make sure that you're keeping as high of scaling as possible and using the weapon to its best effect, I suppose. Splitting your damage with infusions is only worthwhile if you're going to be buffing it as well, and since the only buff that I could even handle at this character is going to be the uh, flame weapon, which I don't have the soul to grab yet, it's pretty worthless to even consider infusions. Come on through here. I am just going to slaughter my way through this area. Ah, oh, lock on fail. I mean, it happens, but it's annoying. Yeah, slaughter my way on through here. Gonna ignore most of the damage just because I have the poise to tank through it, and I have the damage to get the kill shot, even if I get hit, so. It is gonna be playing sloppy, but at this point, it's the end game. I've, I've earned playing sloppy, is how I look at it. I have played through the game, and I did my time. I've earned the right to just kind of. Uh, dead brain these enemies and 
kill them, oh, one at a time, piecemeal, and in whatever fancy ways I really feel like. That's interesting. I was expecting the uh, leaping attack to grab him, but no, it would not seem so. Okay, so I need the counter damage for that to kill them for a strike. Uh, let's see what the backstab does to these guys. Ooh, 1,200 damage. That's nasty. Save as much justice as possible for the boss fight just to be safe. It can be one of those real wear you down boss fights just because you've got damage constantly coming in from the executioner's chariot making laps. And so that's maybe something you want to avoid. Oh, I could also swap this out to grab a few more souls. Sublime bone dust and a fire seed for all you early pyromancers. It's really nice because it comes right before a pyromancy merchant. His combo is three hits long, roll through all those, get a free backstab, and I should be able to jump and attack as he comes up for the kill shot. Yeah, there we go. I'm considering if I want to use any of these pyromancies in this fight, but not likely. This twin blade's going to wreck all the skeletons in a single hit anyway, so there's no point in buffing, at least before the final enemy the actual Executioner's Chariot itself. So I can just sprint right on through this first area. Slash him. I am gonna play it risky and roll through that just because it's... oh gosh. It's a quicker way and it doesn't necessitate, necessitate you actually hitting on over and wasting time in the alcoves on the sides. Not to mention it gives you that little bit of extra distance versus the skeletons, because otherwise they get a little bit of free time to start creeping up on you as you're waiting in the alcove. Though they, they do lose most of it once they get staggered down by the chariot itself. You can see the power... Oh, God. I don't know how he managed to survive so easily. There we are. There should be about two more skeletons left. Yeah, that's everybody. Gonna wait for him to go one more round, and then I'll just drop down this here portcullis, and that's gonna be game for him. Once he's on the ground with me, there's nothing he's gonna be able to do about it. I also want to see if I can toxic him. Flame sweat off might be a uh, better idea, but I want to at least see if it can be done. Yes, and he's toxic. That's really funny. Might as well get the free damage in there, I suppose. Look at that. Just it, it absolutely shreds him. And rightly so. He is one of the earliest bosses you can face, but honestly, as as long as you're good about rolling, you can bait most of his straight out attacks and just walk on by most of the time. It's all about knowing where he's facing and Avoiding both ends, because uh, he is dangerous on both ends. Like, it is basic. Can you guys let me grab that? Thank you. Uh, he does have really powerful staggering moves on his front and back that can come out fairly quickly if you're not paying attention, so it's a little bit tricky, if you're, especially early game when he actually does a fair portion of your health, but no matter. This is one of the most annoying dialogues in the entire game, just because it defaults to no every single time. It's not like the, uh, whatchamacallit, Awestone, where it's like, no, this is, this is a bad covenant, you don't want to join it. The Covenant of Champions, this is just their way of being like, no, yeah, you're going to be evil. And I get that, I'm fine with that, just give me the pyromancies already. Fire whips, that's really good. More great combustion and a firestorm. I believe I actually have a fire tempest, so that firestorm may not be worthwhile. Red sign soapstone just because it's kind of nice. And I do like the executioner's armor. Right now I just have free souls to spend, so I'll grab up all the kind of cool, unique armor. I'm not going to head into the uh, arena just because I don't really have anything I want to do there and now it's the last bit of the episode I'm gonna clear through the germ area grab up all the special loot over here and that'll be it for this episode we'll 
probably be able to finish it off completely by the end of the next episode. So, look forward to that. Oh, uh, there we go. Get out of the way of this guy. Oh, I'm already being summoned. Might as well grab this bit of loot. Rat tail. Mm. And that's a waste of Estus. I am actually going to try and just kill the summoner because I do want to grab all the loot possible from this place and that can only be done in your own world so I'm gonna just completely ignore this room actually yeah he's gonna be a little pest from up above but I've got the iframes to avoid it unless he actually drops down I'm gonna be safe this is where he could be annoying I want to I'm going to assume he triggered the shortcut, but uh, if, if you're going to do that, I'm going to heal, dude. That's your own... Oh, dear. This is why you keep poison moss on your hotbar. Ha! <laughs> He's using dark fog. What a jerk. At least it's not got the bat staff that it used to. Goodness. That's gonna be really annoying because I'm gonna have to. Can I? Can I get? Can I get the? No. Oh well. He was just gonna bombard me with hexes from up above the entire time. The one annoying thing about Dark Orb is that at least with uh, Resonant Souls, you you know that they're paying for it. They can't just spam it. But no, with Dark Orb, you get 20 casts on the base attunement. So there's there's really no point in not just spamming Dickens out of it. And I guess he took advantage of that. Didn't really, wasn't really looking for a fight. Just apparently farming lockstones, and I, I can't fault him for that. Uh, before you have a fully completed dungeon, maybe you really do want all those lockstones and don't really actually want to fight anybody. Just get the easy win. So you know, more power to him. Come on through here. It's a much weaker weapon than it used to be, but Santir's Spear is pretty nice to grab, and I'm just a collectionist, so I need to grab as much as possible. I am really surprised he didn't unlock the shortcut uh, in the next room. Maybe he just didn't have the lockstone for it, or maybe he just doesn't want the faint stone, but that's one of the ones that I think is one of the most worthwhile places about heading through this is that you actually get to unlock that shortcut and get a free guaranteed faint stone early game because I believe the next guaranteed faint stone aside from maybe a single titanite lizard somewhere maybe another titanite lizard probably in the dragon iry but uh, there's a single guaranteed faint stone drop in the dragon iry uh, dragon shrine actually near the priest that's constantly bombarding you so Aside from that, I can't really think of any other sources, and so having this early source can be really useful. Kill both of them. Can't unlock the shortcut from down here, but it will be something we just drop down to. Twisted Barricade. Interesting spell. Never seen it really used, though. One-shot kill. That's good to see. And you? Leave yourself open wonderful. This right here isn't actually attached to any sorts of traps. It just opens the door somewhere up there. Yeah, right around... You know what? I don't know. Maybe it's right there. But uh, we'll see it from the bottom after we head on through here. It unlocks this shortcut. Inside there's a chest. And inside this chest is, I believe, a soul and a faint stone. No, Faintstone and free twinkling, so it's even better. For the cost of a single Ferris Lockstone, you're unlocking this nice little shortcut, a, f a free Faintstone, guaranteed Faintstone for early game, and a free twinkling Titanite. What's not to love? Kill him as quickly as possible so that he doesn't bash this chest here because it's fairly useful. It's got a petrified dragon bone and twinkling, so even more twinkling for all you people trying to get an early special weapon. Both of those are just traps, so you can completely ignore it. It's kind of funny that the tips of the spines stick out ever so slightly from the wall. I think FromSoft does that to just kind of give the player a hint, like, if they're playing a specifically good attention, that, hey, there's going to be a trap here. Watch out. I'm going to tag the bonfire before I go clearing through the level, just in case I fall down, but, uh... 
it shouldn't be too much of an issue. And when I'm done with clearing through this side, I can just homeward bone on back to it. Swing on through. Another one of those mastodon chambers. Unlock it real quick. There's only a soul in this one, but it still gives you a chance to get some of the mastodon equipment. Ouch. I can just tank through it. I don't care. I've got the health for it. Yeah, free 5,000 souls. You're basically trading the uh, lockstone for that drop and chance at more mastodon gear, which I really like. Mastodon helmet and leggings are especially cool in my opinion. I really like the look of both of them. Swing right on through. All the Gurm have very nice drop chances on a lot of things. There's their entire set of equipment. They're, they can also drop uh, Titanite chunks, large Titanite, maybe. I, I don't actually... Yeah, definitely large Titanite and chunks. But they can also drop um, raw stones and mundane stones, which can be sold for a fair penny or just used as is. Yeah, I think Flame Swath would be the best here just to take out a rat or two before I have to deal with them up in person. Let's take away the far one. Oh, I was not expecting that limited range. Really limited range. Is it on a slope? I don't think it is, but I don't... Let's just keep swinging. Just keep swinging. That's all them down. And now I've got the rat to deal with. Get under him, you can swing away. He has a few really quick moves, but so long as you stay under him, you should be invulnerable. I.e., don't stay out in front of him like that. Once he gets down to a little bit lower health than this, he'll start barfing, which will uh, open him up for a bunch of free damage. If you, As long as you stick to his underbelly, you can just swing away at his hind paws with him constantly trying to swipe forward and missing terribly. Uh, you can't actually trade his soul for another pyromancy from Strayed, but it's only the uh, corrosive acid sur version of Toxic Mist. I believe it's Acid Surge or something similar, but it's it's really worthless. Um, unless you're going to be PvP trolling, trying to break people's equipment like a douchebag, then it's not worthwhile. So That's going to be it for this episode. Just going to Head on down to this horse bonfire in the level, kill a few of the Gurm along the way, and that'll be it. I don't really have anything else I need to spend my souls on. I might want to head on over and think about what merchants there are that have worthwhile equipment. I'm definitely going to head back to Mullen at one point and see what he has for me. Oh, I was hoping that would kill him. Alas, him to lack. But, yeah, that's... Almost everything in the game. I've gathered up all the really important loot. All that's left is to uh, face Vendrick himself and then head on to face the Throne Duo and the Chandra back to back. Really looking forward to that fight. Hopefully, I can do it all in one run. We shall see. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.